one day and you're watching innovation blast and as you know that i created a video yesterday on ncrt chapter 4 uh can we part 2 chapter 4 part 2 which is in history so this is a part 2 video and that was a part 1 video so we have completed till cattles horses and chariots so basically now we are going to complete whole chapter and i'll try to make a playlist for all of these videos together so that you can access that a place and then you can bookmark that so we are on words to describe people like in ancient times there were many words that uh, people you means some people used to describe other people on their posts and everything else so there are several ways of describing people in terms of their work or in the terms of the work they do the language they speak the place they belong to their family their communities and cultural practices so it depends on the culture and region so as this is a long sentence so you can just learn that they belong to culture uh, they it belongs to their culture and religion so let's go further let us see some of the words used to describe people found in the rigway so as i have told you rigway is the earliest composition about 3500 years ago now you might be thinking that uh, how uh, how is 3500 uh, how are 3500 years ago possible because we are in 2021 so before coming to this topic i want to clear, clear the number line or the date line so uh, suppose that this is the date line and we refer this point zero the birth of jesus christ i'm just writing jesus christ and these are the dates forward like 1000 here and in here 2021 or 2021 so we are currently here but what's before zero actually time the means the counting of dates just started from zero because there were dates before zero and that's what the reason is now the birth of Jesus Christ. So this is the uh, means the area after the birth of Jesus Christ or the date zero goes to this word can be used as CE. Now what does CE stand for? CE stands for common era. CE for common era. But when we go when we just go to the dates before the birth of Jesus Christ, then we can call it BCE. Now, CE for common era and BCE for before common era. So, Actually, my father was trying to make me laugh. Okay, okay that's fine for now. So, BCE, before common era. Uh, but you need to note down these abbreviations CE and BC. And later on, I'm going to teach you some more like this. <laughs> there was such funny activity, but that's okay, that's fine. So you can just note down and BCE stands for before common era and C stands for common era. Now 3500 years ago, that will be like, just for, just to make it easy, we are not going to take it like 2021, we are going to take it 2020. So now 3500 years ago or just not, let's just, let's take 2000. So, when we go here, then we find 1000 and 2000 and so on. But, 
this is the part to check but before i'm going to tell you that 100 1000 so 2000 uh, it's 3500 500 year ago years ago so 2000 years till here so 2000 years and 1500 so 1000 and suppose 500 so in bce we will count it as 1500 bce not that's also a bit of that's easy to understand so here is 500 here is 1000 and 2000 1000 2000 but common era before common era so 2000 will be referred as common era but while we write 3500 then we will use bce before common era so 1500 so 1500 plus 2000 one five one thousand five hundred plus two thousand is three thousand five hundred. So this is the formula which you can use to find the date in the BCE. When asked in BCE, only then. Common era will be used from the date till zero till two thousand. So two thousand twenty one means twenty twenty one means twenty twenty one thousand years. Actually, uh, I said wrong. Two thousand and twenty one years. After the birth of Jesus Christ. So, understanding my point and that is, that is clear for right now. So, there are two groups who are described in terms of their work. The priests, sometimes called Brahmins. Uh, yes, Brahmins. I am Brahmin and you can find out as... In in uh, as we call it religion in Brahman Muslim like that Sikh etc. Who perform various rituals and the rajas. So now let's come to the rajas. But uh, let's just clean up this mess. So I'm coming just after cleaning this mess. which you will be learning about later in my later videos they did not have capital cities palaces or armies nor did it collect taxes so how were these rajas generally sons did not automatically succeed fathers as rajas so two words were used to describe the people or the community as a whole the word jana which we still use in Hindi and other languages, uh, the other was wish. The word wash comes from wish. So, wash is kind of Sanskrit word or kind of Hindi word. I don't remember. I don't know. <sighs> Several wish or jena are mentioned by name. Yes. Like, uh, for right now, I'm just telling you like Janpadas, Mahajanpadas and like further. Uh, I think we can learn this in chapter 4. So, several wish are generally mentioned by name. So, we find reference to Purujan or Vish, the Bharatajan or Vish, the Yadujan or Vish and so on. So, in ancient, in ancient times, about 2000 years ago, these were just like tags. For tagging people, or you can uh, for your for to make it easier for you, we can just say it as these are titles of people. Hmm. Do any of these names sound familiar? Yes, they sound familiar. Okay, so sometimes the people who compose the hymns describe themselves as aryas. Means about. In ancient times, I'm just writing it on the board. In ancient, ancient times, the people, the people who composed, actually the people who composed hymns, Did 
describe themselves as them. This is an important point. So, uh, if I'm dictating, then you can just write it in your notebooks. Describe themselves as Aryas. So, just write this down and just leave that. So, and called their opponents Dasas or Dasus. You might have heard the name Das. So, Dasas or Dasus are just made from them because they are familiar. Servant. Or you can call them servant. Same. These are probably who did not perform sacrifices, means they didn't did any rituals and sacrifices, and probably spoke different languages. So one of the most popular uh, ancient language was Prakrit, language used by ordinary people, like in Bharat or India we use Bhojpuri and Hindi as Hindi is our mother language, so it is the most popular language in India. And what was the script of this language? The script of the Hindi. Brahmi. So, the script of this language is Brahmi. A actually, we don't call it Brahmi. We call it Brahmi. Uh, write it Brahmi, but call it Brahmi. Actually, my father helped uh, in doing this job. So, thanks to you. Later than the term Dasa and the feminine Dasi. So, the Das means male surgeons, means sorry, male servants, but Dasi means female surgeons. Actually, surgeon is on my mouth, so it's coming out, but never matter. And to mean slave, yes. As I have said you, Family, uh, they actually uh, just leave this point, but servant. So, servant or slave are the same, which means in Hindi, knocker. Slaves were women and men who were often captured in war. Yes, they were treated as the property of their owners. While they were the property of others, but they were treated as the property of those who won them in the battle. Who could make them do whatever work they wanted? If they said that uh, jump from a place, then they could jump or they would just kill them. So they need to say what means they need to follow their orders. So while the Igveda was being composed in the northwest of the subcontinent, so northwest is in the Suleiman and the Kirtar hills. So about there, Actually, I'm going to show you that uh, where is the northeast of in northwest of India. You can go to page number two, and then you can find it out. So, page number two, you can find it on map one. This is north, south, east, and west. So, this is just northwest. Actually, I'm showing you here. This area is northwest. So, about here, the Rigved was being composed. Uh, let me oh, I found, I found it. so there were some other developments elsewhere yes so let us look at some of these now we are just completed with words to describe people as was well such long topic silent sentinels the story of the mega letters so look at this illustri oh, okay, okay. illustration on the next page too. what maybe the illustration is at the okay. You can see this page and this might be the illustration because these are burials. So this might be the illustration here. So these stone boulders are known as... Okay, okay. 
these are also this uh, the image that i showed you was exactly correct you can see that these stone boulders are known as megaliths literally big stones yes they were exactly big um i cannot show that because the bowl is currently filled with mess but i'll clean it in a while so these were carefully arranged by people and were used to mark burial sites means the sites from where uh, some evidences of hunter that was of ancient people have been found these boulders of these boulders or rocks were kept there to mark the, that these were the places where the burials have been found the practice of erecting megaliths began uh, began about 3000 years ago so 3000 years ago means number line 0 and 1000 so about 3000 years ago means in bce 1000 years ago and was a prominent throughout the deccan deccan means the south india so i just need to clean up this mess not much but i only need to clean this much to show you suppose that this is in 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 suppose that this is india actually my drawing is not that good but i can this is the deccan part of india like this part this part is the deccan part which is also called as uh, called as a deccan plateau or the southern plains my drawing is very bad <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I just realized it right now. In in the northeast and Kashmir. Okay, so now let's come to the next page. So the important megalithic sites are shown on map two, page number thirteen. So now just you have to go to page number thirteen. Actually, I'm trying to find that, but I cannot find it. Oh, I I found it. I found it. So megalithic sites are marked with circles green circles like i can show you here one circle is just here that's brahmagiri one circle is here and there's only one megalithic site here so just come back to your page and i'm back to my page yes while some megaliths can be seen on the surface other megalithic burials are often underground yes they are uh, sometimes archaeologists find a circle of stone boulders so a circle of stone boulders be like i'm just going to clean this mess and yes so be like a rectangle and an empty space here here is an empty this is an empty space and with big rock boulders it is just covered like this and with two or three layers okay so just like this empty space and Oh, I just forgot that the illustration which I have shown you was the same illustration about which I am talking about. So while some megaliths can be seen on the surface, okay, okay, I was here, I was here. Some uh, sometimes archaeologists find a circle of stone boulders or single large stone standing on the ground. These are only the, these are the only indications that the uh, that there are burials beneath. So, uh, for an instance, I'm just drawing a mountain, and that this is a mountain, and there are small rocks like this, this, and this. But you found a this much big rock, a big rock. So that is a, that is obviously suspicious. I just want to clean this once again. It won't take a won't take time, but. 
standing on her own. Okay, so there were several things that people did to make megaliths. We have made a list here. Okay, try and arrange them in the correct order. Digging pits in the earth, transporting stones, breaking shoulders, placing stones in position, finding suitable stone, shaping stones. So, uh, I would like to do it in the last. So, this is page number 40. Page number 40. Just take it as a quiz. I'll not erase this part. Finding out about social... No, no. All these bureaus have some common features. Generally, the dead were bury buried with distinctive pots, which are called black and red ware. Also found, also found are tools and weapons of iron and sometimes skeletons of even horses. Horse equipment like... I have horse armor and axes and a dagger. So, the same things which I uh, told are shown here. So, I'm going to just show you that this is dagger, this, these are axes, and this is horse equipment. Was I used in Harappan cities? Yes, a little bit, but now finding out about social differences. Archaeologists think that objects found with a skeleton probably belong to a dead person. Eventually, <laughs> I also think it, but now I don't because I didn't read this book, but now I can find it out easily. Find Brahmi Gideon map 2. But before that, sometimes more objects are found in one grave than another. Now, I said find Brahmagiri on map to page 13. As I have shown you, there was only one megalithic site marked with a circle named Brahmi, Brahmi, Brahmagiri. Brahmagiri. On map to page Here, one skeleton was buried with 33 gold beads. Two stone beads, two copper bangles, and one coin cell. So, this was just an indication, or we can say that expectation, where just we can say that they just believed about why, uh, like I have told you in my one of the videos, that when people died, they were buried with some goats in belief in belief that they will actually in belief that they will not or for some that will not get the shortage of food sorry for wasting sorry that i'm wasting your time but i just got nervous here other skeletons have only a few pots these finds suggest that there was there was some difference in status among the people who are buried some were rich poor merchants chiefs and other followers so this is the only definition or difference between rich and poor where some were some burial spots made for certain families sometimes megaliths contain more than one skeleton these indicate that people perhaps belonging to the same family were buried in the same place though not at the same time so this is a grave. This is a person and a family. When this dies, buried here, but not at the same time. You understand it? I'm not gonna <laughs> go in the deep. The bodies of those who died later were brought into the game grave through the portholes, stone circles or boulders placed on the surface probably served as signposts to find the burial site. That people could return to the same place whenever they wanted to. Like to bury the bodies or to worship. And a special burial at Imangao. So I'm just going to tell you what is Imangao. Actually Imangao is a site which you can, site which you can find on page number 13. Okay, so I got that. Imanga. So Imanga is just a 
it's just an early village you can see it here you can see that Imango is just an early village here now let's get back to our okay we are here it is site on the river Ghod, a tribute a tributary of Bhima so there is a point here tributary of Bhima there's a river river Bhima in its tributary so many river so what is tributary tributary is a smaller river that flows from a large river like the origin of the small river smaller river or the tributary is from the larger river so Bhim is the origin of the smaller river why you can find it at river Bhod so from here you can find a tributary Ghol. Now you can write it like this and match it with this so that looks like cool right diagram. And it was occupied between 3600 and 2700 years ago. So 2700 means 700 years ago and 3600. So that's gonna be like 4000, 4300 years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Here, adults were generally buried in the ground, laid out straight, with the head towards the north. Now, also, when we, when people, when uh, you sleep towards the north, then people forbid you that not to sleep towards the north. North, south, east, west. No, never to sleep towards the north. <laughs> Warning. within the houses vessels that probably contained food and water were placed with the dead yes one man was found buried in a large four-legged clay jar in the courtyard of five-roomed house one of the largest houses at the site so i'm going to show you that how the how those houses look like maybe the entrance here that room and they were just like storerooms. Okay, storerooms. One, two, three, four, five. In the center of the settlement, this house also had a granary. The body was placed in a cross legged position. Do you think this was the body of a chief? Give reasons for your answer. Yes, because the difference between a chief and a poor person is the money so as we said so as we found it four leg clay pot so that was very big clay pot and that might be the body of the chief after that uh, i have made some notes of this chapter so i'm going to explain those notes for a recap a quick recap in fact okay so i just want my father to give me my uh, diary. Okay, okay, he's giving. So let's let's go here. No, not the diary. White colored. Yes, white colored. Okay, so the center of the settlement. This house also had a granary. The the body was placed in a cross legged position. Okay, so we were not here. So this was my notes diary. So I'm gonna just give you a quick recap of this chapter in a while after the chapter ends. So there is a short elsewhere type box. So what skeletal studies tell us? It is easy to make out the skeleton of a child from its small size. Yes, very easy. However, there is no major difference in the bones of a girl and a boy. Yes. Can we make out whether a skeleton was that of a man or a woman? Uh, actually, if science goes, means the development will just increase or science and that will help in finding that we can find the gender male or female, girl or boy. Sometimes people decide on basis of what is found with the skeleton. For instance, if a skeleton is found with a jewelry, it 
is sometimes thought to be that of a woman. However, there are problems with this. Often, men also wore one, uh, ornaments. Like, still people wear ornaments like uh, rings in ear and etc. A better way of figuring out the gender of a skeleton is look at the bone structure. <laughs> he was trying to laugh again. <laughs> Don't do this. So, bone structure. The hip or the pelvic area of a woman is generally larger to enable childbearing. Yes, the distinctions are based on the modern, modern skeletal studies. About 2000 years ago, so 2000 years ago, exactly on the, uh, at the time of the birth of Jesus Christ. 2000 years ago, there was a famous physician named Charaka, <laughs> what a name, Charaka, who wrote a book on medicine known as the Charaka Samhita. Charak Samhita. Oh, that's not Char uh, that's not Charaka Samhita. It's Charak Samhita, who wrote a book on medicine known as Chakra. Okay, okay. The, there he states that the human body has three hundred sixty bones, but we have three hundred six bones. This is much larger than the number of two hundred bones that are recognized in modern anatomy. Chakra. Uh, okay, Chakra. Uh, Charak arrived at this figure by counting the teeth joints and cartilage how do you think he found out about the human body in such great detail there might be a kind of science uh, in the ancient times and that's it now uh, we come to our last topic which is occupations at inamgaon so as i have told you inamgaon is an early village uh, about the central india so archaeologists have found seeds of wheat Barley, rice, pulses, millets, pea, and sea sand. Bones of numbers of animals. Numbers of animals means hundreds, no, not hundreds, but uh, hundreds and hundreds and fifties and many more. Bones of a number of animals, many bearing cut marks that also show that they have been used as a, uh, they have been used as food. Like still, people uh, eat chicken and fishes. I don't know talk about that messy thing. These include cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horse, ass, <laughs> pig, summer, spotted deer, black buck, antelope. Antelope is basically uh, antelope is basically a species of deer from wi uh, uh, from which there is a perfume named musk. Yes, musk. So musk is found in the navel of its stomach so antelope hair and mangoes <laughs> besides birds crocodiles turtle crab and even fish there is evidence of fruits such as bay amla jamun dates and a variety of berries were collected okay so possible okay use this evidence to list the possible occupations of the people at in Inangao. Now elsewhere and fine, fine okay okay we'll just do but as I have as I've said you page number forty there's a quiz I'm just gonna solve it so digging pits in the earth transporting stones breaking borders placing stones in the uh, position finding suitable stones shaping stones so first burying the dead then finding suitable stones placing stones in positions breaking boulders no no digging pits in the earth then burying the dead then finding suitable stone then uh, placing stones in position breaking boulders transporting stones and finally they shape the stones okay so that's it find china in your actually i'm reading elsewhere so, find China in your atlas about three, around 3,500 years ago when Rig Veda was being composed. We find some of the first evidence of writing in China. As you can see this image written in the elsewhere. These writings were on animal bones. These were called oracle bones. Because they were used to predict the future. Uh, 
when uh, I say predict the future, I just uh, remember a book called End of Days by Sylvia Brown, and I have bought that book. And uh, if you all can can tell me in the comments that should I make uh, explanation video of the end of days or not? Okay, so we were king scott scribes to write questions on the bones would they win battles would the harvest be good would they have sons the bones were put into the fire and they cracked because of the heat yes the fortune tellers study these cracks and try to predict the future as you may expect they sometimes made mistakes these kings lived in palaces in cities big palaces forts and big citadels and etc they amassed vast quantities of wealth, including large, elaborately, elaborately decorated bronze vessels. However, they did not uh, know the use of iron. So, now, as I have said you, that I'm just going to teach you my notes. So, let's find it out. Okay, okay. So, a quick recap. Suleiman and Kirtar Hills, which are the northwest of India, were first begin to grow crops, especially wheat and barley, about 8,000 years ago. So, no, oh, no need to clean the board, as this is a quick recap. And Garo Hills situated to the northeast of the windows. Actually, I'm going to show you where are Garo Hills situated. Okay, they are here. Garo Hills to the northeast. So, north, northwest. Here, the north east here, and you as you can find that I have underlined Garrow Hills. I have underlined Garrow Hills, so I need this map. And about Garrow Hills, situated in the north of Vindhas, have it have evidence where rice was first grown. And about 4700 years ago, some of the earliest cities flourished in the banks of Vindhya and its tributaries. So as a quick recap, I'm also going to tell what a tributary is. A tributary is a smaller river which originates from a larger river. So, later about 2500 years ago, cities developed in the banks of the Ganga and its tributaries and along the sea coasts. In ancient times, the area along these rivers, the south of the Ganga, was known as the Magad, now lying in the state of Bihar. The word India comes from the Indus, called Sindhu in Sanskrit. Next page, the Iranians and the Greeks. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you that the history of the name India. Two points, which are approximately six lines. So, the Iranians and the Greeks who came to the northwest about 2500 years ago and were familiar with the Indus called it the Hindus or the Indus. And the land to the east of the river was called India. The name Bharat was used for a group of people who lived in the northwest and who are mentioned in the Rigveda. The earliest composition in Sanskrit dated to about 3500 years ago. Okay, that it was used for the country. And to find out about the past, there are several ways. Some of them are to read books that were written long ago. These are called manuscripts because they were written by hand. This comes from the Latin word Manu, as I have taught you in my previous video meaning hand these were usually written on palm leaf or on the specially prepared bark or called birch we can also study inscriptions these are writings on relatively hard surfaces like stone or metal etc sometimes king kings got their orders inscribed on on metals or stone and just distributed along amongst the cities and so the people could read and follow their orders other kinds of inscriptions made by kings were records of victories and battles. Those who study these historical objects are called archaeologists. So, as I have taught you, archaeologists are like detectives who use evidence, ancient evidences as clues to find out about our past. Archaeologists also look for bones of animals, birds, and fish to find out what people ate in the past. And the dates were uh, the dates are come for from the date generally assigned to the birth of Jesus Christ, the founder of Christianity, the 2000 means 2000 years after the birth of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Okay. Actually, now I realized what mistake I made. Actually, I'm reading chapter 1 notes. But 
as this is good as, uh, as a quick recap for chapter 1 so as i have written uh, as i have written very less in chapter 4 only some okay so i think that i'm going to just recite half of it or less than half because of the video is already uh, very long and um, don't matter and uh, i have just read the notes of chapter one so that doesn't matter <laughs> rigveda was recited and heard rather than read it was written down several centuries after it was given and composed by printed and 2000 2000 years ago some of the hymns in the rigveda are in the forms of dialogues there are many prayers in the rigveda for cattle children especially sons and horses some of the will that was obtained was kept by the leaders some was given to priests and the rest was distributed amongst the normal people ordinary people merchants and etc most of the men took part in ancient wars there were two groups that are that are described in terms of their work. The priests, sometimes called the Brahmins, who performed various rituals, and the Rajas. These Rajas were not like the ones you will be learning about later in my videos. They did not have capital cities, palaces, or armies. Nor did they collect taxes. Generally, sons did not automatically su succeed their fathers as Rajas. Some burials uh, have been found and are common uh, shown below. Okay, the same. I have drawn it for a diagram, dagger, some axes, and horse equipment. Archaeologists think that objects found with a skeleton probably belong to a dead person, obviously. Sometimes more objects are found in one grave than in another. Yes, uh, depends on the number of people in the family. Sometimes megalithic megaliths contain more than one skeleton. These indicate that people perhaps belonging to the same family were buried in the same place, though not at the same time. Many horses had a granary. The body was placed in a cross-legged position. Archaeologists have found seeds of wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas, and sea same. Bones of numbers of animals, many bearing cut marks that show that have been used uh, as food, have also been found. These, in the, these include cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horse, ass, pig, sambar, spotted deer, black buck, antelope, hare, and mongoose, besides birds, crocodile, turtle, crab, and fish. There is evidence that fruits such as bear, amla, jamun, dates, and a variety of berries were, berries were collected. So here we end up with the notes of chapter 4. And then that's it for today. I'll be meeting you in my next video. Till then, take care and bye bye.